Hi there YouTube friends, welcome back to Auntie A's Kitchen. I hope you're having a great week. I'm excited to share today's recipe with you, Branston pickle. It's a popular and classic pickle that we use in the UK in cheese sandwiches and is more commonly used in a plowman's lunch. Branston pickle is primarily made up of diced vegetables and fruit, making it both sweet and spicy. It's dark in color and has a thick and sticky chutney consistency. It's simple to make and so delicious, so thanks for watching. Let's get cooking. As you can see in the video, I've placed all of the main fruits and vegetables that we're going to be using today on the board. Then is all that's left to do is to chop them up. And if you are new to the channel, you can find the recipe and a list of all the ingredients and measurements used in the information just below the video. I personally like the rustic style of an original, or as I like to call it, a chunky Branston pickle. So don't worry if when you cut up the ingredients, they are not perfect and equal in size. While your onions are cooking in a little oil on a low heat, it will give you time to prepare and chop up the other ingredients. Just remember to keep checking and stirring on your onions occasionally. I personally prefer eating the chunky style Branston pickle, but if you prefer the smaller chunks version, just cut your fruits and vegetables into smaller pieces. If you look at the ingredients list on the back of a Branston pickle jar, you will notice that dates are used in the original recipe, but I find them hard to get where I live, so I use prunes and I have actually found that you can't taste the difference between the two. For the root vegetables, I use some carrot and some swede, or otherwise known as rutabaga, and these will take a long time to cook, and since we are simmering our Branston for a long time, they will add a little bit of consistency and bite into our pickle. When it comes to cauliflower, I know there are lots of different sizes. I use about a cup to two cups, but don't worry, this is a really flexible recipe and if you end up using a little bit less or a little bit more, the recipe will still taste great. With everything chopped up, we can now move on to the next step. The onions have started to soften and caramelize, so add some garlic into your pan and allow this to cook for a minute or so before adding all the other ingredients. I did not mention earlier, but make sure that you're using a big pan to be able to hold everything. Add equal parts apple cider vinegar and water, then your brown sugar and mix everything well together. On a low heat, allow this to cook just for a few minutes before then adding a few more other flavors to your pan. Add about a tablespoon of mustard. I'm using whole grain mustard, but if you have mustard powder, then you could also use that. Season with some salt and pepper, and then for the spices, add a teaspoon of allspice and a teaspoon of cayenne pepper for a little bit of heat. If this is your first time making this recipe, I recommend only adding half a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. Then when you make this recipe again, you can then adapt the spice levels according to your taste buds. The last two ingredients to add are two tablespoons of tomato puree and the juice from half a lemon. Then get this all mixed in and allow it to simmer on a low heat for about an hour. Make sure to go back occasionally and stir, pulling the ingredients from the side back into the middle. And you can see here, the pickle sauce is starting to thicken and darken in color and the smell in my kitchen is just wonderful. After an hour of cooking, you're going to want to taste the flavor and check the texture of your root vegetables. As I mentioned earlier, you want to bite to them, but you don't want them mushy. They need a little longer, so I add some water and salt and allow these to cook and reduce for another 30 minutes. After the final 30 minutes, I turn off the heat and check the consistency of the vegetables. While the Branston pickle is cooling down, I then quickly sterilize some jars with some hot water in the sink. Friends often ask about the right consistency as I show you here. Run your spoon through your homemade Branston pickle and as it comes back slowly, it is ready. And remember, it will thicken up more as it cools. Then is all that's left to do is to place it in your jars. A quick tip is to make sure that all of the pickle is submerged in the liquid. Allow this to cool completely before putting the lid on and placing it in your refrigerator. For the best taste, leave it a few days before devouring it. So here we have a delicious homemade Branston pickle that really does taste as good as the real thing. This is such a popular English pickle and in the next video I'm going to show you another British classic pub recipe, the Plowman's Lunch, and I'm going to use some of this pickle in the recipe. So thanks for watching, have a great week, and if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. God bless, chop or cam the